Have you heard about the multifunctional collaborative open source platform named Diri? Well, Venizelos of Timiu is here to tell us all about it. Hi, Venizelos. Hello. How about you tell us about Pantera, the project that uh, actually is, uh, IRI is part of? Okay. Pantera project is a collaborative, is a coordination support action mm -hmm. project of uh, Horizon 2020. And it was, uh, we had this project running for the last four and a half years. Mm -hmm. And the target was to help the low activity countries in Europe, as we call them, which are the widening countries, the 13 widening countries, plus a couple more that have been classified as spending uh, less than 5% of the European money in their research and innovation, and the rest of the 95 is the rest of the countries. So, so 12, 13 countries of Europe are spending 95%, and these countries are spending just 5% of European money in research and innovation. So Pantera came along as a coordination and support action from DGNR to try and find ways of uh, strengthening the interest and the ways of these countries raising their research and innovation activities. Why is this happening, however? Why is such a difference? Okay, the, um, trying to understand why, we have identified many re various reasons when we were trying to see why this is uh, the situation in Europe. And um, uh, we have uh, found out that uh, the, the organization within the, these countries, how they are organized, uh, the research um, entities, the research people in these countries, they are not strongly supported within the premises of the country to be um, uh, winners at European level. And because through Horizon Europe and, uh, and Horizon 2020 before and all the framework programs, especially in the recent years, are very highly competitive. So by giving the possibility in a call for only one, two, maximum three projects being financed and, be and someone has to compete with the strong research centers, mature centers of Europe, there is a lot of truth why we are failing. And they are not failing in reality because they Past the threshold, they are, let's say, 10, 11, 12, sometimes even 13 out of 15 uh, uh, maximum points that they, sh they should uh, have in order to be successful. But still, quite a lot of them are not financed because there are other consortia coming from stronger uh, research areas that they achieve 13 and a half, 14, 14 and a half. And so although they pass the threshold of 10, they're, they're still non-financed. And this is a problem. I agree with you. It is unfortunate that some of these projects, some of these uh, consortia do not get the chance, uh, even though they do compete. But I think that, um, as you said, it's unlikely. It's not, it's not a failure. Uh, they just need to try, to try a little bit more. And they have the tools, actually, uh, to help them. In my uh, opinion, the ERI platform, which is part of the Pantera project, is one of them. Do you agree? Oh, yes, certainly, because ERI was uh, developed and has been given, let's say, the openness and the architecture um, to offer, through ERI, the possibilities of third, uh, these widening countries, these low activity research wise countries, uh, the stakeholders within those to be able through ERI to come nearer to the decision making policy related uh, process. process so that they can have 
at their fingertips the full knowledge of what is happening in Europe, what are the project results, what has been achieved, and what are the plans ahead. And all this is shared through this open, uh, multifunctional, uh, collaborative platform that gives access to these uh, researchers and urges them to become um, experts in working groups of ETIPSnet, working groups of ERA, the Research Alliance in Europe, in order to come nearer to stronger, more mature research bodies and hence build through that their research possibilities. You know, open source and, and collaborative platforms are becoming more and more a trend in uh, the European Commission. I've heard it from, from some other uh, sources. And uh, although it seems like the dream, it seems quite important, it also sounds quite difficult. I mean, how are you going to achieve an, a truly open source collaborative uh, uh, function? Okay, this, is, this was a, a key objective that we have put in designing ERI. It is, let's say, open and accessible because the GNR has come through, has accepted the GNR, uh, the ERI platform, as uh, the platform that can host all the projects and has decided to give it the name of the home of uh, projects and financing them, financing ERI, to be operating freely for this and serving the research and innovation community of Europe. Exactly, no, no reason to be modest here. You were chosen by DGNR to do exactly this, uh, this service, to provide this service. Yes. And uh, when do you think it's going to be finished and ready? Or is it already functioning? Okay, ERI is already uh, up and running, yeah. is operational, is accessible, but is at the start of its phase of growth. Because uh, such platforms, uh, they need uh, content to be fully operational. So although in functional terms is available and, and operating, still there is a lot of work to be done to bring information in, data, knowledge, and and bring active stakeholders for the collaboration area to really be operational and functional and serving uh, the wider uh, research and innovation community. So in short, yes, the platform is there, is functioning, is operational, but it needs time to grow, mature, and uh, give the value that is aimed for. So I'm guessing this conversation is going to get a sequel. Uh, yes. <laughs> thank you very much, Venizelos. Thank you for this conversation. Thank you. And thank you all for watching us.